The Goat House is back. Rating every single NFL team's Week 9 performance. Recapping these games and slapping a grade on each team. A video we do um, every Monday night. Made some major improvements. So excited about it. Let's take a look at what I got. Grading the Thursday night game. First, the Jets win 21-13. to I gave them a B-. minus, And I, I liked how they kind of figured things out on offense at the end of this game. Garrett Wilson was awesome. They got Devontae Adams going. Uh, so figuring out at the end and playing against a good pass defense is a good sign to help you win this game. But going forward, if you look at the whole game as a whole, you know, the entire game, a uh, little sloppy still, right? The run defense was brutal on top of the offense being sloppy and Corley dropping that ball was a big thing as well. Um, you know, pressure getting after Rodgers more so in the first half, uh, but wasn't perfect. Maybe heading in the right direction. The defensive line was awesome getting after Stroud. So there was some really good things, but there was some still some things where yeah, you could have lost because of that. It was a little sloppy, but they do find a way to win. I gave him a B minus. The Texans, I gave a C minus. I mean, Joe Mixon ran all over him, and they honestly he ran a lot. You know, a lot of rushing attempts. Honestly, should have ran more. They probably would have won the game. Usually, if you run like that, you win the football game. So you want to kill their grade because you couldn't find a way to win with that, but they still were able to run on a good defense like that. So it keeps them from being in the D range, but the offensive line was putrid. CJ Stroud wasn't good, but he didn't, he didn't, he did have a tough task. He obviously had a hard task with that offensive line, but you know, can't really make excuses. I thought he had one really good drive, really good drive. And they scored on it. What we'll missed some open throws, but the offense line was the worst part about this. Didn't love the play calling either. The defense was solid for the most part, but I don't know what happened in the end there. That wasn't their normal pass defense. You know, Petrie looked a little rough for him, so uh, they get a C minus. Only thing they had going for them was that run game led by Joe Mixon, but man, that pass offense led by that offensive line was brutal in this one. So Jets B minus, Texans C minus. Falcons beat the Cowboys 27-21. The Falcons earn an A. I love that they're two-dimensional, right? That's what we talked about going into this game. They can run the ball. Bijan had a monster game. Algier got in the end zone, and they can throw the ball. Kirk Cousins threw the ball very well. Mooney stepping up. I mean, Drake London, after his nice touchdown, got injured, and they were still able to find a way to have enough offense. Defense was, you know, did enough. Wasn't as flashy as last week, but they were a little more stout, I guess, than last week. And they still played against an explosive offense. So maybe it wasn't perfect, close to an A+. Plus. That's an A for the Falcons. They look like a good football team. Cowboys get a D, and maybe that's generous. They didn't feel quite like an F, but D, D-. minus seemed appropriate. The Falcons won this game more comfortably than the score shows. The Cowboys, I mean, Dowdle ran pretty well. I guess they fought back, so that's kind of what keeps them at a D, but this game fell over pretty quickly. They are missing a lot of players, but just not enough going for the Cowboys. It's odd seeing it because they're usually a pretty good team, uh, you know, in the regular season at least, but pretty consistently. Even Dak on the sideline, if you can read his lips, uh, he said, we effing suck, so that's not great. They got to get healthier. They got to get back on track. An A for the Falcons, a D for the Dallas Cowboys. Bills and Dolphins, what a thriller in the AFC East. The Bills usually take care of business against the Dolphins. Technically, they did it, but it wasn't the same in this one. They find a way to win with a game that could go either way, 30-27. to 27. Uh, I'll grade the Bills a B plus. They move the ball with ease at the end of the game. Uh, it, well, in the second half, the fourth quarter especially, and that's kind of what got the job done here. Uh, the defense was so great last week. I'm like, man, this defense is figuring it out. They're putting it together. Not so much in a game like this. I know the Dolphins have an explosive offense, but they typically take care of business in this game. The defense was a little off. I thought there'd be a little more James Cook when I got him more going, but I love me some Ray Davis, man. He looks legit. I mean, it's pretty easy to tell when it comes to running backs once they get NFL reps. Um, and they probably could have won this game a little easier if Keon Coleman didn't have that uh, slip up early in the game, which is an incredible interception by Jalen Ramsey. I give him a B plus though. They fight. They they figure out how to win this game. The offense was pretty close to flawless down the stretch. The defense was kind of rough. So, yeah, it's maybe a B plus is uh, maybe generous based on how the defense was. But I like this this battle. It actually felt like a heavyweight battle. The Dolphins, you know, the defense was completely rough. They couldn't get a stop. On the Bills, that's why they lost. Same thing as last week. A very winnable game against the Cardinals. A very winnable game against the Bills. The defense really let them down. So based on that defensive performance, you'd say B might be a little much. But, man, you play a red-hot, buff, a juggernaut-looking Buffalo Bills team that the defense is getting better and better. And you go put the points up on them like that. Um, I mean, you made plays, uh, you know, both sides. Mainly, um, you know, both sides in the first half. But a winnable game against a good team. It was tough you didn't win it, but I give them a B for that performance against a, one of the better teams in football, the Buffalo Bills. So B plus and B is what we're giving out in this game.
Bengals roll the Raiders 41-24, and it felt like they won by more than that as well. The Raiders got some late points there, an absolute dominant victory from the Bengals, as it should be against the Raiders, but this was impressive. Uh, they get an A+. Plus. I mean, you dominate that much. It doesn't really matter who you play. You're going to get an A+. Plus. Yeah, it doesn't really matter who you play too much in a, in a video like this with the grades, but they get an A+. Plus. I mean, Kasicki was everywhere. Chase Brown, I mean, they were able to throw the ball. They were able to run the ball. They were able to get a lot of people involved, and they were able to play defense. Hendrickson racking up some sacks, just making big-time plays here. Uh, Myers was the only guy they really struggled with a little bit maybe with the Raiders and the Raiders yeah they put up some points it was at the end they were sloppy in this game Minshew goes out Ritter comes in is it that much of a difference no uh, just sloppy and they fired Getze it was actually last uh, last night they fired Getze but um, yeah just really messy really sloppy not much going for them at all sometimes even when they lose they have the defense going for them and that was probably actually the worst thing in this game so when that goes south and everything for sure is going to be south so they get an F for that one, a sloppy, bad performance in a tough season for the Raiders. Chargers and Browns. The Chargers win 27 to 10. Uh, this was a good outing for them. This was a really, I'm right in the A, A minus range, but this game fell over pretty early. It felt like they dominated. You know, Herbert been throwing the ball a little bit better. Uh, Quentin Johnson getting going. Herbert Blank throwing the ball as good as anyone, actually. Get a lot of guys going. The defense was the standout performance here. The defense was awesome in this game. Yeah, the only thing, the offensive line typically looks, uh, been looking pretty good as they completed it by adding Joe Alt, but I know they played Miles Garrett in this Browns defense, but they really struggled in this game, and it's pretty amazing. Usually if your quarterback's getting hit that much, sacked that much, usually you lose, uh, and they won easily. So I guess that's the positive, but that's something they can clean up a little bit. Uh, you know, the Browns were giving them some gifts, which Chargers making good plays. So maybe it wasn't the most perfect performance, but it fell over early on. I, I was very confident with the Chargers winning this game. I was surprised a lot of people were picking the Browns. Um, so it's a good job. Chargers, yeah, A minus A range there. Uh, wasn't absolutely perfect, but really close. Uh, and the Browns, I give a D minus two. The only reason this isn't an F is because they got after Justin Herbert. They sacked him six times. Uh, I believe it was six. I was top of my head there. Uh, but. You know, so if you do that, that that's pretty good. It's a big factor, even though it didn't end up mattering, but that keeps you from being an F. Really the only thing, but they just made so many mistakes. You know, very, very sloppy, and this one had nothing going for them. Um, you know, was the defense, uh, when we talked about the pass rush, was, was the defense as a whole god-awful? No. Uh, offense was. Winston was turning it over. That made a little more sense what happened to Winston in that game. He had some dropped interceptions last week, so... Luck was on their side last week. It was most definitely not on their side this week, and they finished with a D minus this week. Titans Patriots honestly was an entertain. It was an entertaining game. Went to overtime. The Titans find a way and win twenty to seventeen. It overall wasn't the greatest performance from these teams. I mean, Rudolph threw the ball decently. Pollard ran the ball very very well, and the Titans were kind of playing it too safe with that at times. But it was working, I suppose. But they, yeah, they were kind of playing for field goals at times. And then the defense was giving up big plays, even though they did hold the Patriots a you know limited amount of points. It wasn't beautiful. Uh, it wasn't pretty. It was a bad. It was obvious what happened here. This is kind of how it went. Kind of how I thought the Patriots would squeak by, but it was a 50-50 game. But it kind of went how we expected. Two teams that weren't going to look pretty. They weren't the greatest. Somebody was going to find a way to win by a field goal, right? Uh, that's what happened. So I give the Titans a B minus. Pollard was the standout there. The Patriots. Yeah, they were very close to winning, so maybe you would think it would be a little bit closer and a great. I thought the Titans did outplay them, though, in this game. They deserved to win. There was some flashes from May. There was some uh, you know, some bad moments. That's what we expected. I was higher on May than anyone, but even I expected this from him. He's going to have the bad turnovers, but he's going to make crazy plays, and I I'm confident with his future. And they had a chance in this game, but couldn't stop the run of the Titans. The Titans uh, uh, you know, definitely outran them. May actually ran very well, but... Um, yeah, and there's some hope in the future. That's kind of your takeaway with a game like this. But a B- minus for the Titans, C for the Patriots. It was, it was a pretty entertaining game, but it wasn't the best teams, and that kind of showed with those what happened on the field and with those grades right there. Commanders and Giants, an interesting one. I mean, I don't think the, the score showed how it really went fully. The Giants kind of tried to march back. The Commanders had control in this game. They definitely outplayed them. The offense was their offense. It was very, very solid. I mean, it could have been a little bit better, I guess, and the defense was uh, letting up at the end. Uh, but still, they, it was comfortable for them. I give them a B plus. Wasn't super, super pretty, but a little pretty. Give them a B plus on that one. Uh, the Giants, yeah, they marched back. You know, Daniel Jones maybe got going a little bit more, showing the toughness, actually throwing for touchdowns. Uh, they tried to march back, but I don't know. It, they're still sloppy. I, yeah, I don't know if I agree with the call on that that big fumble. 
um, you know, that got through and Singletary was going to fall on it, but the whistle blew. So I don't know if I agree with the end, ending call on that one. So maybe they got screwed there, but it's just still being sloppy. Sloppy and just not having enough. This game fell over early on, so it was tough for them to try to come back. So C, C plus range. I thought a C because the, the sloppiness and digging themselves a hole was a little more fitting there. Um, so uh, the commanders go 2-0 and against them this year. They get a B plus. Giants get a C. Saints and Panthers, another one that was kind of entertaining, but between two pretty bad teams, and it kind of expected that, and it showed. Didn't really expect the Saints to end that way, the way they did, kind of going into this game. They were favored by seven, but uh, Panthers win the game. Uh, some flashes from Bryce Young, uh, you know, and some young receivers, of course. Chuba Hubbard's been awesome this year, was once again in this game. Uh, but overall, there was still some sloppiness. Took a lot to move the ball, and the defense gave up a lot. You know, they gave up a lot to Alvin Kamara. They cannot stop the run, so they find a way to get a clutch win, but overall felt like a C plus, maybe P minus. I felt that would feel a little generous. C plus performance. And the Saints, I mean, when you lose to the Panthers, you probably deserve an F. Uh, they got carried by Kamara. They lost the game. I mean, even was a Cam Jordan's like, we lost to the Panthers after the game. You know, all that said, it, you know, maybe should be an F, but they didn't get embarrassed like some of the teams we talked about or we're going to talk about. Uh, and a, a big, the main, mainly the number one thing that keeps them from being, uh, you know, lower is, is Kamara did go off. Like the running game was there and they probably did enough to win this game and a lot of came out, but still not good, sloppy. Lost to the Panthers, you get a D-plus in this one. So uh, not the best of teams as expected here. But And then the Saints fire uh, Dennis Allen. That was uh, this morning, actually. So um, he's been a good defensive coach for them for a long time, even though he's the head coach now. And uh, so that's going to be interesting without him. But it had to be done there. They just weren't doing enough. Uh, but I think the front office actually is more to blame than Dennis Allen. But I think both need to be taken care of there and I think they need to be sellers at the deadline but they might be a little stubborn because of that front office they haven't been handling things that great lately but Panthers show some flashes what does it mean for the future though very easy one to grade here the Ravens roll the Broncos 41 to 10 they get an A plus they're very very solid on both sides of the ball defense has not been solid this year it was in this game they're playing a team that's getting better and better uh, and playing really good defense but not so much against the Ravens they roll them Derrick Henry rolls them Lamar rolls them Zay Flowers uh, but it was good to see the defense step up a little bit the Broncos I know you still question are they for real can they beat good teams but they've been playing good football so it's a good win for the Ravens, obviously, rolling them that big. Uh, Broncos get an F. I mean, dominated from start to finish. Nothing going in this game. Not enough help at the receiver position. Just not, you know, excuse me, not enough juice. Not enough for them. Not enough explosiveness. Uh, and then you do, yeah, I, I don't know if they could beat good teams. They've looked better than expected, but can they beat? I mean, the Bucks were good at one point, but... You know, I, I, it's just it's just hard to trust this team, and, and especially in these types of... Uh, Matchups. I mean, they're underdogs by nine and a half, and everyone's, even myself, that is probably too much, but is that a little disrespectful? No, they lose by 31 points. So can this team even handle games like this? And it kind of makes you wonder. So, um, yeah, they get dominated, obviously, in this one. They deserve an F. Jags versus the Eagles. Eagles win 28-23. It's a weird one, a weird and interesting one to grade because the Eagles – uh, dominated early in this game and got what was a 22-0 lead. Had a good good lead and, and maybe that did it. You know, maybe that just was just too much and that was the reason they won. And the players played well. Hurts Barkley seen some. I saw some. We all saw a play from him that doesn't feel like it should be possible. It's you know not human. Uh, you know, so if you look at it all that way, you know AJ Brown going down. Maybe you grade them a little bit better, but. Things went their way early. They got outplayed in the second half. Maybe got some scares here. Sirianni did not coach a good game either. Uh, so I wasn't really thrilled with them down the stretch of this game. The Jags completely outplayed them in the second half. Uh, you know, Luckily, the Eagles, things went their way early. So I give them a B. You kind of got to mix those things together, and those are like the tougher games to grade. Right in the middle at a B there. Uh, and the Jags... Mm, it's tough to grade because they dug themselves a hole. They were extremely sloppy, like right off the bat. You know, they fumble a punt. Um, you know, it, it's and then Trevor Lawrence still again pretty sloppy, and the defense could give up big plays. So it feels like a C plus is generous, but they completely outplayed the Eagles in the second half. You know, if it wasn't for slip ups early, they could have won this game. So felt like you get bumped up to a C plus because how it was in the second half, but maybe that's a little gen C C plus range for them. 
weird game this was. Cardinals dominate the Bears 29 to 9, and we got an F plus. I don't know if I've ever done that before. Maybe I have for something, but uh, Cardinals get an A plus. Bears get an F plus. Uh, Cardinals starting to get consistent. That was they were the most inconsistent team in football. Uh, they the defense. How about the defense stepping up? That was kind of the concern. They get six sacks. I mean, things going their way in this game. Things looking up for them. Offense, they just came in came in there and played, you know, smash mouth football, just pounded the football and just made the Bears pay for it. So uh, that's you don't have to do a whole lot when that's successful that way, and it was successful. So um, they roll the Bears in this one, 29-9. Bears, uh, yeah, I mean, it didn't really feel like it was a close. It was close for a little bit. Uh, I guess that's why they get an F+. Plus, close for a little bit. They didn't get they got embarrassed. They didn't get completely embarrassed, I guess, like the Raiders and the Broncos. So that's why I gave them an F, F plus. But I don't know how you can give them even a D minus. They, you know, they can't score. They probably have the off, uh, worst offense in football this week. I guess the, the, it really felt like they did. And it feels like in the NFL they have the worst offensive football when they're on the road. That's not a good thing. When playing good teams, they can't play well. Uh, so the offense just had a F minus performance. I mean, even looking at the defense, though, I mean, yeah, they didn't give up much against the pass, but it's because they didn't really get challenged that way. They could not stop the run. The Cardinals just out physical that. I mean, maybe an F plus might be generous. The more I'm talking, I mean, the offense was awful. The run defense was awful in a game that was supposed to be kind of 50 50 or close. Uh, they, uh, they, it wasn't close. You know, they, the Cardinals are a much better team is what we learn in a game like that. And the bears maybe even have a defensive problem that's getting put up on film. Now it's more mainly, it's obviously mainly the offense's fault, but, uh, we've been talking about coaching firings and you know, whatnot, uh, you know, throughout this video, maybe it's kind of getting to that time for that bear staff led by Eberflus. But I mean, he does typically call a very, very good defense though. So the defense could take a hit without him, but it has to be done. It feels like at this point, lions win a division battle. They have two of those, those one, and they're both on the road against the Vikings and the Packers. That is so massive. It's unreal. They win 24 to 14. Another interesting one to grade here because we'll start with the lions. Uh, we'll give them a B plus. I mean, they, they were kind of comfortable throughout this game. Maybe not right in the beginning, but it felt like throughout all of this game, most of this game, the Lions were going to win it. You know, so even though they didn't outgain the Packers, they got completely outgained. It did feel like they were outplaying them. They made plays on both sides of the ball. The defense really showed up in the red zone in this game. So I give them a B plus. Wasn't super pretty. It was the weather wasn't super pretty. They were also on the road. They got a guy ejected. Wasn't super pretty. They got outgained, so it's hard to put them in the A range. But it is a massive statement win, uh, uh, you know, on the road outdoors. So I'll give them a B plus. The Packers couldn't really score. We had a bad interception from Love. That was a pick six. Uh, you know, the the defense couldn't step up in the clutch situations, and it really never felt like they were going to win this game. So that probably says C minus D range. But they did move the football. They moved the football. They out completely outgained the Detroit Lions in the rain. You know, so that bumps them up to a C. It just they gotta finish. And Love's got to get right. He's definitely not right right now. Um if he gets a hundred percent healthy, I can see them turning this it's hard weird to say turning it around because they're fine. You know, they're a good football team. But I can see them turning it like next time they play the Lions. Kind of like last year. They started bad. They got they got going. They beat the Lions the second time around. I could totally see that. But it starts with Love uh, getting healthier here. But uh, a weird one to Gray just because uh, what went on in this game. But the Lions had control of this game. And, and, they, and they pull off a massive victory. And they're the top team along with the Chiefs in the NFL. Uh, they're approving that. Rams and Seahawks was a fun game going to overtime. I, I don't, when I watched this game, I didn't really feel like it was two great performances, really. I mean, there was flashes. It was a flashy game. That's what it was. But super, super inconsistent from this game. There was no scoring through majority of this game. Just no scoring in this game. Like, where's the offense against bad defense? I thought it was more of just bad offense messing up, but the defenses were stepping up. Uh, you know, and then all of a sudden the offenses are getting going. They're making these wild plays, but the defenses are awful. So, I, I you know, I just thought it was incons very inconsistent team performances on this game. Couldn't get anything steady going, and it kind of makes you question going forward. But they can make the flashy plays. The Rams find a way to win. I was very shocked they couldn't get Kyron Williams going more. 
uh, you know, lacking the run game. They're much, not much going for them early in this game. I didn't think calls were going their way, but they found a way to win. They found a way to get clutch. I mean, an insane play by Stafford and Rob and Stafford and Robinson at the end and there. Uh, they did have takeaways in the red zone, but yeah, Geno was giving them gifts, three interceptions that took the overtime to just squeak this one by. So I, I don't, I wasn't overly thrilled, but I gave him a B minus in the Seahawks. I mean, the defense was playing solid for a stretch. Geno made some good throws. JSM was big time, but Geno also turned was had some awful throws, some turnovers in the red zone. Uh, sloppy football defense couldn't stop anything at the end. I, you know, this was a battle, but it wasn't the great. It didn't really feel like the greatest performances give B minus and a C plus for those teams, but it was a winnable game for the Seattle Seahawks, which could have bumped their grade up And the Sunday night game was a sloppy one for sure. Uh, the Vikings, both these teams are a little interesting when it comes to grades because the Vikings were so sloppy and almost disastrous in the first half. I mean, missed field goals, a chip shot field goal, Darnold turnovers, uh, one of them in the first half, just not being able to finish drives. They get up a touchdown on offense. Uh, that was ugly. It was ugly, and they were out gaining the Colts. So, and they figured out in the second half, and it still wasn't pretty, but it was much better. But just, again, so sloppy, never really looked pretty. But then you could argue they dominated the Colts. Like, they completely outgained them. The defense showed up in this game. So that's what makes them interesting to grade. But I wasn't overly thrilled, uh, you know, with them. And still some sloppiness that, that they didn't really have in the in the beginning of the season, which usually it's the opposite for teams. So I'll give them a B-. minus. Again, if the score kind of matched, if they could have finished, they, you know, they probably should have dominated the Colts. They probably should have put up 30-plus points and, you know, and maybe the Colts probably should have had less than 13. And they probably would have got an A or an A+. Plus, but the sloppiness brings them way down. Wasn't overly thrilled. But the defense uh, was much better than expected. So you got to give them credit there. They're in the B-B B range, I suppose. Colts, I give them a C. You almost want to give them lower because they had nothing going on offense. And you could say, well, the defense held the Vikings to zero in the first half. The defense scored. But at the same time, the defense could not stop the Vikings' offense. They were every time they moved down the field instantly. They're at midfield instantly after one play. They were clutching up in the red zone for the most part. They did score on defense. Uh, I, I guess that keeps them from being a lesser grade. But things went their way in this game. The Vikings were not on their game, and they still found a way to lose. And it felt like fairly easily in the second half found a way, I, I suppose. Uh, did not like the play calling at all. They just weren't a factor in any way on offense in this game. And, uh, yeah, Richardson probably would have, you know, turned the ball over, struggled a little bit against the Vikings, a confusing Flores defense, but he would have gave them a little bit more of a spark. And it's the guy that, you know, it would have been a good learning experience and, and it could have gave him life, you know. Um, so that would be the reason to play him. Not that I was confident at all. I think he would have turned the ball over a bit more than Flacco in this game. But, uh, again, would have had a little bit more juice, a little bit more of a spark. So, yeah, weird game. This was a weird game. They flex it to, to the night game. Um Seahawks Rams would have made a lot of, lot more sense honestly so that it was odd I don't know uh you know what what, what that decision was but if I can get a B minus B minus B range and the Colts I think a firm C maybe a C minus I think a firm C for them uh so that is what we got for Sunday night football grades and the game that just wrapped up on Monday night football, the Chiefs winning a thriller in overtime, 30-24 to over the Buccaneers. I gave the Chiefs a B+, plus, the Buccaneers a B. Both these teams were very, very close to being the same at a B. You know, the Chiefs not overly impressive, playing down to their competition a little bit. It took overtime to pull it off while the Bucs missing their top three receivers. But it did feel like they, up, they outplayed, excuse me, the Buccaneers in this game, and they probably should have won a little sooner or a little easier, perhaps. It shouldn't have come down to overtime, you know, if they can execute fully. And we've seen that throughout the year. But what they do, the most important times, the most important situations, when they absolutely have to make a play, when they absolutely have to convert, when they absolutely have to score, they do it. And that's a big reason why they're undefeated. Um, so offense was clicking. I was a little surprised with the defense slipping up, especially at the end of regulation, maybe a little bit more prevent than normal. Uh, but... Mahomes shaking up at one point. They figured it out. DeAndre Hopkins looked awesome. He's going to be, a, I mean, an awesome addition from Holmes in this offense. Worthy was extremely disappointing right off the bat. I mean, not getting two feet in. That was brutal. How, how was that one foot end up out of bounds? And uh, you should make, you should complete the catch, but also score a touchdown. He gets neither. And then they're forced to scheme up plays to him. And those weren't even going great. So that's the type of player he is and the risk of taking him, even though he is a electrifying player at times. So, wasn't thrilled with that, but they find a way. Wasn't pretty, 
but um, that's why they're undefeated. It's the main takeaway when when the when the game's on the line, you know, when you absolutely need to make a play to make a play. And the Buccaneers, it's tough that they lost this game, obviously, because they had an opportunity. They didn't get an opportunity in overtime, but that's how everyone knows the overtime rules going into it. So it's not like Todd Bowles, you know, didn't know know it after they scored and didn't go for two, which we'll get on that. And I'm going to get on him that, get on him on that in a second. But I gave the Bucks a B. I mean, they played. You can even give them a B plus. I mean, they lost the game, but they they played pretty well, especially given the circumstances. Missing your top three receivers because don't forget about McMillan as well. But the key is the top two star receivers. And they actually they moved the ball. You know, they they didn't run all over them, but they had some key runs that were pretty effective. And and, and Baker scrambled well. He threw well. Kate Otten was a big time factor. They they had a good game plan given the matchup here in this one and. Uh, they were getting pressure on Mahomes. I was surprised about that because they've been a hot and cold team when it comes to getting pressure, not super consistent. They were getting some good pressure on Mahomes, and you know they did give up 30 points though, uh, and didn't step up in the you know in, in the, the biggest moments at the end of the day. But uh, they had an opportunity. They could have won this game if they went for two because they did get a stop. I know the Chiefs would have went on fourth though, uh, but you know after that, but. Uh, it was a, such an obvious time to go for two. I mean, understand you're in KC on the road. Understand your opponent, the Chiefs. You know, if they get the ball first in overtime, chance is going to side with them because they move the ball on you. Even though they didn't score a ton of points at that point, they scored a bit. They move the ball on you. And if you get the ball first, you got to repeat what you just did without your receivers. And the Chiefs won't be in prevent on any plays. They're going to play much better defense. You have to understand the situation. That was the most obvious go for two over tie the tie the game. And then given the where you're at on the two point conversion, it kind of favors some t- you know short yardage passes, which is perfect for Baker Mayfield. He's really good at it, really good in the red zone, really good at scrambling if he needs to, and perfect for Kate Otten, who has been a monster. And the Chiefs are the worst in football stopping tight ends. Understand the opponent. Understand all the situation. Like there's so many different situations that point towards going for two. That was a a very bad. I tweeted it before they they kicked the extra point. Like they absolutely have to go for two is what I said. I was thinking it the whole drive. I think Aikman was saying it as well. Um, so we're on the same page there. I mean that was brutal. Um, if they would have got a chance in overtime, who knows? Maybe they would have won. But I don't like their chances without those receivers and the Chiefs playing a little bit more of like a buckle down their normal defense, you know, in overtime than what they did at the end of regulation. So understand the situation it was a poor job by Bowles. You know, Todd Bowles doing that, but. Overall, given the circumstances, the Bucks played pretty well. Chiefs keep escaping. It's what they do. Um, you know, they're a very good football team, obviously. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for this one. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the new format of this. I think it's much better uh, This for this video on Monday night. We have trade deadline videos on the channel. Trade deadline is coming up, uh, you know, obviously tomorrow, Tuesday, which is coming up. Uh, we have you covered for that, especially on our Twitter as well. But, yeah, like, subscribe to Nova Kids on. It's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.